Hey everyone, so today I wanted to do something a little different and show you how to do an acrylic painting. Um, and this is the underpainting and we're going to block in values and then add detail using a limited palette. So a limited palette is only when you use a few colors. Before starting my underpainting, I want to add a ground. A ground is a layer of color on your paper or canvas. A white canvas or a sheet of paper can be very intimidating, so some artists will add a contrasting color underneath their actual um, drawing or painting before they get started. I use Naphthol Red Light and Cronacodone Nickel Azo Gold to create my ground. I'm starting my painting with an underpainting using a limited palette. I'm only using two browns, a blue and a white, and you can see the colors in this image. Um, an underpainting helps you get your objects in the right place and also get your values correct before you start adding color. So it can help your painting actually go faster because you're not having to figure out where things should be and the correct value before you start adding color. So it's called an underpainting because it's underneath your painting. And that's how many artists initially start their paintings. All right, so let's get started with painting. Um, first, I'm going to block in my shadows. And <clears throat> since we're just doing an underpainting of our colors, we just worry about lights and darks. So with an underpainting, you want to start with the shadows. So I'm going to mix some of my um, raw umber and the blue that I have to make a black. Um, if, you, if you've taken my art class and we did color mixing, you know that when you mix brown and blue, you get black. And that is an easier way to make black, especially if you're in a situation where you don't have black on hand. You can mix um, brown and blue together to make your own blacks. And I like some of that blue showing through, so it's a little cooler. And I'm looking at my photo, and this just is a lot easier than me trying to set up and look at the still life um, and film at the same time. So I go in here and block in a lot of my shadows. You can always lighten these up, but it's really hard to darken shadows especially if you add white um, they'll get really chalky so this is why with acrylic and oil painting you work dark to light usually um, you don't have to some people it just depends on your preference everybody has their own way of painting so I'm blocking in I have a lot of shadows in that pine cone I'm going to block in a lot of that. <clears throat> and you know, if I put shadows in the wrong place, I can always paint over it. That is the great thing about painting is you can always paint over it unless you're working with watercolor. Watercolor is a little bit harder to do. to start with. You're not going to focus on details right now. Um, most of what you're doing is blocking in things. And this can help you work a lot faster. A lot of students want to focus on details in the beginning, but um, 
we want to focus on large areas. And I don't always work this way. I'm guilty of too, like zooming in on an area and painting a lot of details instead of blocking in areas. It just depends on what I'm working on. So I have this part up here. And you can hear my neighbor with a really loud vehicle. So now I'm going to go to my mid-tone and mid-tones can be kind of hard to figure out. So with the mid-tone, I'm just going to use the burnt umber and just a smidge of white because you don't want this to be um, too light. looking at areas that are like not highlights and they're not shadows so those are your mid-tones and this one has quite a few highlights or maybe not highlights but lighter areas So too, a little too light so I'm just going to go over these with just burnt umber and burnt umber is warmer so it'll come forward more than the raw umber will and when I come forward I mean when I say come forward I mean it looks like it's closer to you so it might be in the foreground Whereas cool colors kind of recede back. So you want to use cool colors in background areas and shaded areas. <laughs> so that makes them look like they're farther in space. really loose right now and probably doesn't look anything like my picture you're probably wondering what is she doing but that is part of the process a lot of students get frustrated when they first start painting because it doesn't look anything like what they're supposed to be painting and that is totally fine that's why you just keep working you don't just stop halfway through or on the first or second layer and um, give up. So with painting, you layer, you layer, you layer. You keep going and going and going until you get to a point where you're happy with it. <clears throat> and I know that can be frustrating, but um, that's art for you. Like it's one of those things that you're always learning. You honestly never stop learning. I've been painting for a really long time now. I won't say how long. And I still learn about painting all the time. I learn something new. Some new technique, some new material. And I think that's why I majored in art because it definitely wasn't boring. So now I'm gonna go in here and add highlights. So there's a lot of highlights on that bird nest. And I'm just gonna go in here and add lines. So sometimes you wait till the end to do highlights. I like to go back and forth. With highlights. Or at least the 
block a few in so that I know the shape of what I'm doing. And I'll probably end up painting over some of these, but that's fine. <laughs> on my pine cone just to kind of get the shape of things on here there aren't a whole lot on there there are a lot of highlights on this branch here and especially right here there's a really strong light source and it mostly comes from the light overhead so I just took a quick photo of this yesterday to have as a source for you all to use to paint from. So I wasn't really worried about light source, which was probably not a great idea. Um, so now I'm gonna go in here and start adding more mid-tones. So when most artists are doing an underpainting, they'll use warm and cool colors and um, It'll look a lot different than this, but I wanted to keep this simple for you since you might not have a lot of materials at home or a lot of access to certain colors. So, you know, things will change. They'll look differently depending on circumstances, and these are definitely not normal circumstances. So, I'm just using what I have on hand and trying to make this um, simple for you. So because I'm using the open acrylics, I can blend. Um, if you're not using open, these will not, your acrylics will probably be dry by now and you won't be able to do this. But that's fine, you would block in these areas and you wouldn't worry about blending edges. So I'm starting to have some dimension. So these mid-tones in here are really helping with bringing out the highlights and the shadows in some areas. It probably still looks like a bunch of blobs, but again, we just keep working. So now there's some lighter areas here in that bird nest that aren't really highlights, they're, so they're not like really bright bright, but they're still light. Um, 
So now I'm going to go in here and start adding more of those. I really want to cover up most of this orange. Um, it's fine if it peeks through in a couple of areas. But the goal is just to create unity across your painting so that orange doesn't have to show completely through in some areas. It might just peek out. <clears throat> so this is a really light brown. It might look white, but um, it does have some of that burnt umber in it. And I'm mostly trying to get like the shape of my nest down. So now that I have all this color blocked in, now I can start like working on details but I still wanna make sure I get all this orange covered and like, and have a variety of values in here. So this is mostly a value study. So hopefully if I was to put my photo in grayscale, my painting would match it. Now to make this easier, you could put a photo that you're working from in grayscale and do your underpainting with, but I know that's not always an option. So it's really good to learn how to look for values. And the more you do that, the better you get at it. It's not just something that happens overnight. It does get a little bit easier. And the more you draw and paint, of course, the better you'll get at it. Same way with seeing color. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It took me a really long time to understand color. And I'm still learning a lot all the time. I think my goal with this is maybe tomorrow to actually go over this with oil paint. So you can see the difference between working with acrylic and oil. I really love oil. I can leave a painting for a couple of days, come back to it, jump right in it, start back working on it. Sometimes it's still wet so I can mix my colors. Or a lot of the times when I need a break, if I'm working on an oil painting, I can take a break for a couple of hours and come back and jump right in and my colors are still wet. I don't have to worry about mixing colors. So that's a really awesome thing about oil paint. And with these open acrylics, kind of works the same way. So these are still wet. So I can go in here and blend. So if you want to invest in some good um, acrylics, can try golden. They are artist quality, so they're not meant to be um, used for students, but if you're really committed to painting, definitely try them out. This is not an advertisement. So it was really rough, but I have my idea down. I know where things are, what they're shaped like.
my beetle is not quite right. I'm sorry about the really bad lighting. Maybe I can fix that for tomorrow's video. So at this stage I have everything in what I think is the right place. Um, right shape and my drawing yesterday really helped with this so if you're struggling with a composition try sketching it out first and that way you can figure out where things are size relation proportion proportion placement all that good stuff before you start working on a painting um, it really helps that's why I always stress to my students to do sketches beforehand because it really makes it easier when you start um, working on your final and you're not problem solving while working on your final. You figured out all those issues before you get to your final drawing. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then I'll come back and we'll add some more details. My paint is mostly dry now so um what I want to do is go in there and start cleaning up some of the edges and work on the values a little bit more. So at this point, um, this is when I could start adding details. But since I'm going to do an oil painting demo tomorrow, I think I'm just going to leave it very loose. Um, and I can add details with oil paint in there. Right now, I just want to go in here and cover up some of these orange spots and um, break up some of these really large areas of highlights a little bit. Acrylic paint can sometimes be a little transparent. So I'm painting over some of these highlights without completely covering them. It just takes it down a notch. So tone them down just a little bit. And some of these are way too thick. So I can go in here with a brush and go right across the edge of that and make those a little bit thinner, smaller. So if you don't have a really small brush, um, this is one way that you can get smaller details, is to go right across the edge of it, right up against that edge and paint it. And this will also help with cleaning up edges. So if you want a crisp edge and it's really, really rough, you just slowly go across against the edge of whatever you're painting and clean up that edge. If you don't have a steady hand, it does take some practice. And the more you paint, um, the better you'll get at this. It's like everything else, it takes time. Right now, I'm just going back and forth between highlights, mid-tones, shadows, and cleaning up some of those areas. This will make it much easier when I go over this with oil paint, and I won't have to worry about cleaning up those edges with oil paint, which could take more time because the oil paint has to dry And it might not completely cover what I've painted down in acrylic, so I have to go over it multiple times. 
Hopefully this will save me some time tomorrow. I want to clean up this edge across the top. a bigger brush and just slowly go right across this edge and there's actually a highlight across there so once I get this painted in and get the shape right I can go over it with a little bit lighter value I don't want it to be really white just a little bit lighter I painted it back a dark background back there and that will actually make that cloth look lighter than it really is so if you want to add contrast you can add a really dark background and put some highlights right against that edge and it'll create some nice contrast I like this rough edge in here, especially with painting from observation. I like to see layers underneath. So I'm gonna leave that orange around the edge. If you're following along at home, you can always paint all the way up to the edge if you want, but I like to see the process. I leave it. I'm going to leave that edge there. I'm going to go here. There's um, a really light highlight here where the light is hitting it. And here. So now again, I'm blocking in. So some areas were darker than they needed to be. So at this point, I can go in there and start adding some nice highlights. Cloth is one of my favorite things to paint. You can get all these nice colors and values in there, and you don't have to worry about it looking exactly like what you're seeing because cloth changes. never going to be the same. So if you go back the next day and try to create the exact same folds, um, you're not going to get them. So I really enjoy painting cloth. <laughs> in between just so you don't um, make your shadows look too gray my highlights have white in them so if you dip that brush your highlight brush into your shadow colors and then go in there and start painting it can gray out your shadows when I'm oil painting, I'll usually have a brush that I use for shadows and one that I use for highlights. So that does not happen. So that my shadows stay really cool and dark and my highlights stay bright. So it's just something to think about while you're painting. And of course with acrylic, you can just rinse out your brush in between if you don't have a whole lot of brushes. So 
So I realized that I forgot a fold back here. So I want to add that in real quick. Again, it's the joy of painting. And there's a highlight that goes across this ridge for that separation. So this highlight is a little too white. So I got in here with some burnt umber and get rid of that or paint over it. I decided to do an acrylic painting today because this is something that I don't really get to do in my classes. Just take the time to paint and let you follow along or just watch. So I hope this helps you out a little bit and you enjoy it. And you could let me know what other painting videos you want to show want me to demonstrate so this is a little bit lighter than I want it to be but um, my background is really dark and that needs to be lightened up a little bit so I can make that pine cone a little lighter than it should be. And here on my beetle, there's highlights. So we're going to add those. It's actually a really white highlight. here and here. done with my underpainting and once this dries really well I can go over it with color using oil paint and because I have my values correct um, it'll be a whole lot easier to paint and I think the placement of everything is really good um, so my oil painting should go fairly quickly I just have to worry about getting colors correct and um, that is a whole other thing to think about when you're painting is color relationships, color mixing, making things look um, realistic if you want or correct. And there are a ton of color resources online for that. So we will stop here for today. Put my little legs on here. 
And as you could see, I could just keep working on this for probably another hour, but you have to get to a point where you stop. Okay, so I'm at that point right now where I think I should stop. All right, so stay tuned for tomorrow where I show you how to paint over this with oil, color, oil paint and add color. All right, see you later. Thank you.